I'm not a fan of, of mega doses of epitalin and you definitely want to do it infrequently. Like to me, 10 milligram vial over X period of time and that's done one to four times per year max. So from a total yearly in, like ingestion standpoint, we're looking kind of at like 40 milligrams. If you can, mic so okay, you can microdose, we're kind of, let's differentiate. If you want the longevity telomerase space change, because remember, if we're looking at those telomeres, so where are my hands at? There we go. So we have the parent strand up here, so it's going from three to five, and then the new DNA strand in here, three to five on the opposite. So it's reading up, what is that, left, right, up and down, it's the opposite. We're trying to look at that spacer so we can add more space to that DNA strand. It's called a three prime overhang. Try to improve that, right? If you drive that process too hard, which comes from a threshold concept of chemical signaling, that's when it can spill over. And they actually talk about in the research more of cell growth, not so senescent cell, but I like to say senescent cell more so because you can't really have yourself without senescent cell accumulation first. So in my kind of world, if you're hired, if you're trying to take it for health aspects, you cannot dose it extremely hot, okay? Then if we look at the changes to circadian patterns, you can microdose it at 50 micrograms, 100 micrograms. Because you're dosing it in such a small amount, it's not hitting that threshold concept to then spill over into the senescent cell accumulation.